My name is, uh, is Benjamin Charlier. I'm a legal advisor for the ICRC uh, based in, in Geneva. And I work for the advisory service on IHL, which is a specialized unit, which was created about uh, 20 years ago or so at the request of states to assist them in implementing at national level their obligations under international humanitarian laws. So in the course of my career and uh, also uh, within the mandate of our unit, uh, we're basically in charge of uh, uh, assisting those states uh, in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, uh, but also in, uh, in Americas uh, to fulfill their obligations under the Geneva Conventions, including repressing uh, serious violations of IHL, uh, namely war crimes. The repression of war crimes or international crimes in itself poses uh, a lot of uh, challenges for national judicial authorities, which are sometimes, if not very often, uh, underestimated. So what we do basically is we both promote um, adhesion to, accession to and ratification of, uh, of the relevant treaties to states, um, and we provide uh, technical tools to states to to, uh, to do that um, and we also assist states in enacting the proper legislations um, that they need to enact based on their obligations under the Geneva Conventions. Once the states have given jurisdiction over these crimes to their uh, judges, basically, and prosecutors, then the second step is to make sure that those judges are equipped by way of being trained, by way of getting the resources uh, to actually perform the, the job at operational level. There's a a bit of education that needs to be done on the international framework. You do not prosecute an international crime as you do a common ordinary crime. Usually national uh, prosecutors or judges, they're experts of national criminal law. They also need to be assisted in relation to the specificities of the investigations in relation to international crimes. Uh, you know, war crimes, uh, they often uh, happen in remote uh, places. Uh, uh, they entail large-scale atrocities with plenty of perpetrators, victims. Uh, um, evidence collection is an issue. So there are efforts to be done in Africa and elsewhere at, and in two aspects. So in, in terms of, of enhancing the, the knowledge of the international framework, but also equipping, investigating uh, authorities with the operational tools to actually treat those crimes uh, as they should be treated, with all the expertise uh, that needs to be implemented. There is a lot of value in, uh, in training groups of magistrates uh, in, in international humanitarian law and in inter international criminal law, because as I said, very often these magistrates are not experts in international law uh, in the first place. So it's not a given that they are equipped with all the legal tools to, to do the job. So there is no question that there is a lot of value in bringing uh, magistrates from national jurisdictions uh, together, both to be briefed by external experts, uh, but also to ensure peer-to-peer -peer exchanges between them, because very often uh, you also uh, underestimate the value of having those practitioners exchanging ideas, uh, experiences, uh, difficulties, challenges in relation to their uh, to their uh, to their practice. 